Hi, this is Daniela Vignon from Cisco Wireless Tech. In this video, we are going to go on a step-by-step -step process on how to renew certificates for web administration and web authentication using a PEM certificate with a CSR generated directly on the controller. This process will work even on a high availability deployment because all certificates are synced from the primary to the secondary, even if the CSR was generated on the controller directly, which is exactly the case for this video. We are now going to go over each of these steps to renew the certificate on the 9800. Once you've logged into the 9800, navigate to Configuration, Security, and PKI Management. Click on the Keeper Generation tab to add a new key for the certificate. Click on Add and, fill in the key name, select RSA key for the key type, set the module size to 4096, and make sure to make the key exportable by clicking on this checkbox. Finally, click on Generate. You will see on this list the newly created RSA key pair. Move to the Add Certificate tab and click on the Generate Certificate Signing Request submenu. Enter all the necessary details as per your organization. Please note, certificate name refers to the trust point and the common name for the cert is the domain name of the certificate. Select the key name that was generated on step one and once everything is correct, click on Generate. The generated CSR will appear right next to this space. Click on Copy and make sure to save that CSR somewhere safe. This is the first PEM document you will have. This is what will be signed by the CA. This process will also generate a trust point. Navigate to the Trust Points tab and take note of the name as it will be used later on during the chain validation. At this point, you will have to submit the CSR generated on step 2 and have it signed by a CA. From this point onwards, we will use the CLI of the controller, so make sure you have access to it. In this example, the CA returned a single file with three certificates. Make sure to decode the PEM certificates one by one to figure out which one is the device signed certificate, the intermediate certificate, and the root certificate. Beware that there might be more than one intermediate certificates. You can refer to this document for more information on how to decode and identify each of the certificates. Once you have established which is which, we'll need to authenticate the CAs to the 9800. You will need to create a trust point for every CA level. In this example, there is only a single intermediate certificate. Create a new trust point for the root CA by entering the following commands. Take note of the root CA trust point you enter. Now, authenticate the root CA. Copy and paste the root certificate received from the certificate authority. Perform the chain validation. Copy and paste the intermediate certificate received from the CA. Make sure to do the same process for all the intermediate CAs. A new trust point is needed for each certificate and they reference the trust point that contains the next level of certification. As an example, the process with two intermediate CAs is as shown. Now that the root and intermediate certificates have been authenticated on the controller, we'll need to import the device signed certificate by the CA. At this point, the new certificate has been installed on the 9800. To use the new certificate, in the GUI of the controller, go to Administration, Management, HTTP, HTTPS. Under HTTP Trust Point Configuration, select the trust point that was generated on Step 2. Click Apply and select Yes for the HTTP services to restart. Take into consideration that since HTTP services are down for a few seconds, during this time none of the HTTP servers will work, meaning that any SSID with a web portal that needs to be displayed for a user to log in will not be shown. Wait for the controller web page to reload. To validate that the certificate is now being used, on the web browser of your preference, click to view the certificate and validate the validity period. To use the certificate on the portal page that is displayed to users that are trying to connect to the network, go to Configuration, Security, and Web Health. Select the global parameter map. Select the trust point from step two and type in the virtual IP hostname. 
make sure it matches the common name in the certificate. Finally, restart the HTTP services from the CLI. And now, when the user sees the splash page, they will no longer see the error saying that the connection is not private. Thank you for watching.